and welcome to the Lost World Minute, the Minute World Minute podcast we're doing 1907 sequel to Jurassic Park, one minute at a time. I'm Brad. I'm Dave. And today we're discussing Minute 32 of the Lost World. Minute 32, we are clocking along nicely. Yes we are, yes we are. Mummy! Daddy, you've got to come see this! I found something! Okay, before we get into Minute 32, uh, a little bit of news coming out of Hawaii this week. They've, uh, they're about to wrap filming. They've just had a wrap party and... Um, from what we can see, what's been reported over there, uh, they've only got a couple of days shooting left. David, from uh, all the stuff you've seen from out, out of Hawaii, um, being spoiler-free, of course, has um, mm-hmm. been getting you excited, seeing some of the sets uh, and that. Well, they did. They did show the. They, were, they did show that they're um, working on the airfield with a Cessna. Can't remember the model number, but it's a small private planes, private style plane that they're working with at the uh, Dunheville Airport or something, something like that. The, uh, well, it's a skydiving airport that they take skydivers in, and then they jump out of the plane and land at the air- airfield. Yeah, second units they're <laughs> filming at the moment. They're going to finish up the week with the uh, filming schedule. But, yeah, Cessna, yeah. Car- Cessna Caravan, it threw me for a loop at the moment because of the caravan. On it, I thought it was the uh, that was the name of the RV that we've seen from the UK <laughs> next to the cabin, but um, no, we got to see photos of it. It's like uh, yeah, typical skydiving type plane, so mm-hmm. possibly our uh, our rescue plane for some survivors. Something yet, like that, yeah. yeah. Yet to be seen, but um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see more of that as it comes along. I'm noticing some certain uh, trends with architecture, whether it's just behind the scenes stuff or whether it's actually going to be in the film Mm -hmm. Um, we can talk about that more when trailers start coming out with uh, that sort of stuff but um, I'm just yeah just loving seeing physical sets being built over Mm -hmm. there Um, yeah they have they built they rebuilt the main street set also at Oahu just like they built the one in Pinewood that we talked about earlier yeah yeah except this one has been dressed with all kinds of foliage hmm so looks like we're going to flash forward a bit uh, between in the uh, movies at some point. Yes, there could be a uh, bit of a time skip. Ian, the animal's dehydrated. The first thing it's going to do is go to a water source, and then it's going to look for the next thing its body needs. Hey guys, this is Brad from the future. Just chiming in quickly to let you all know that uh, we are up for voting on the podcast awards. If you listen to us and you do like what we do, uh, we do ask that you go over to www.podcastawards.com and vote for the Lost World Minute. You do need to register to vote. I'm pretty sure you can only vote once, but uh, just check it out when you get over there. Um, it would help out the show immensely if we could uh, get nominated and win uh, Podcast Awards. So head over and do that, and now on with the show. Not much news to uh, discuss today, so uh, if you're ready, Dave, we'll get straight into minute 32. Yeah. All right. As we enter the 31st minute of the Lost World, Sarah's cleaning up Kelly's rubbish on the ground and telling Ian, why not rescue her when she's really in trouble and be there when you say you will, and that she's made a career out of waiting for him. As we start the 32nd minute of the Lost World, Kelly turns around to look at Malcolm and says, you know, Sarah's got a pretty good... Ian cuts her off and says it's so important for the future that you do not finish that sentence. And this is privacy, outside, and pushes her towards the door. At 31 minutes and 14 seconds, Sarah stops what she's doing, walks over to Malcolm, grabbing his hand and getting him to sit down in front of her. She says to him, I love that you rode in here on a white horse. I really do. I just need you to turn up in a cab every once in a while as well. At 31 minutes and 27 seconds, after hearing the door open to the RV, Anne looks over at Kelly and starts telling her to get back inside that it's not safe. At 31 minutes and 36 seconds, Sarah has a good long look at Anne and contemplates their friendship. At 31 minutes and 38 seconds, she stands up and says, OK, I know what I'm doing, but you guys should definitely go. I'm going to stay. I love you. I just don't need you right now. At 31 minutes and 51 seconds, Ian stands and says what you need is a good antipsychotic. At 31 minutes and 55 seconds, 
Sarah says, I'll be back in five or six days. Ian replies, you'll be back in five or six pieces. And this ends the 32nd minute of The Lost World. We get Kelly here, you know, she's got a pretty good and doesn't even get to finish uh, what she was going to say. Malcolm, it's so important for the future you do not finish that sentence. <laughs> uh, which is which is one line that uh, I do love to reuse. Um, mm-hmm. Especially if uh, two children sort of growing up now in, 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 in the school and uh, learning more about the outside world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> challenging, challenging your uh, parenthood <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, Ian plays with privacy, get outside, which is interesting. He's sort of telling her to go outside. Um, Sarah comes over and kneels down in front of Ian. I love you riding here on a white horse. I really do. It's very dramatic, but I need you to turn up in a cab once in a while, which <laughs> I don't. Which is a funny line. Um, I don't see it as too raunchy or anything else. And then he suddenly turns to Kelly and says, "Hey, <laughs> don't go outside. It's not safe." And rambles on a bit. Stay in here and sort of. It's just weird that Sarah's not really coming on to him or anything. And, yeah. But um, all of a sudden, he sort of... Whether he wants Kelly inside just so the talk or the discussion doesn't go that way or... Yeah, it's just very weird. Very weird how it's shot and hard to uh, understand what, what he's on about. But um, you get a look here when Sarah sort of realises that he doesn't want to talk to her. He's sort of essentially blowing her off um, mm-hmm. here and... Uh, you get that sort of look in her eyes. She knows and uh, stands up. Okay, I know what I'm doing, but you guys should definitely go. Um, I'm going to stay. I love you. I just don't need you right now. Which, um, she can't. She can't get through to Ian how important uh, what she's doing there is. Documentary aside, sort of being able to witness the animals in their uh, environment and everything else. And then we get <laughs> then we get Ian. Uh, I tell you what, you need a good antipsychotic. And, um, Sarah, I'll be back in five or six days, and Ian, now you'll be back in five or six pieces. I use that antipsychotic line a lot when I'm dealing with people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because we're about to get into uh, Ingen arriving next, and the next minute's going to pick up a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot is just talking back and forth in this one, so not a lot happening, um, yeah. which makes for a short minute. That's true. One thing we did forget to uh, bring up, it started in minute 31 when they come into the trailers. Um, there's a computer monitor, we talked about the radar, but there's another one on the bench uh, giving off dinosaur information, seemingly mm-hmm. black and white. <laughs> Gotta love 97. Um, <laughs> it, it, black and white computers. Yeah, yeah. InGen logo on the top corner. Um, <laughs> like when... It's mainly when uh, Malcolm comes in and sees Kelly's mess because a lot of the, lot of uh, minute 31 and 32 he's sitting in front of it, which is a shame. Mm-hmm. Um, you got that that little screen or big screen showing all that information. Mostly all uh, Crash McCre- Mark Crash McCreary concept art. It's um, it shows off uh, Tyrannodon, Dilophosaurus, uh, Parasaurolophus, I think at some point, and Pachycephalosaurus, I think they may have on there as well. Pretty much, it's mostly herbivores is what they show, except for Dilophosaurus and Pteranodon. But the Dilophosaurus one appears in the making of video, or not the making of it, the making of book. And you get to see a little print, it says on the bottom, a little text box that says that they grow to 20 feet long, which goes to imply that the one that we saw in the first Jurassic Park movie was just a juvenile. Yeah, which is interesting. And then when Sarah comes into the trail, we get... A, it looks like a T-Rex as well. Um, it's, it's just got the long, like, whip, not whip tail, but the tail's long and curves back around on itself. Mm-hmm. Sort of from what we've seen from concept art there. Um, and then when uh, when Sarah sits him down too, you see the brachiosaur head. Oh, um, yeah. Just, yeah. just briefly. It's, it's hard, though, because there's... There's glare coming in from the windows and the sunroof. And plus, uh, you only get quick flash glimpses of it as well. Mm. Yep. Really, the trailer is another thing, that, another spot that you really went all out on, though. So, the trailer is a great spot to just kind of look for things be- going on behind the actors. Look at the little uh, boops and beeps and lights flashing. See all the different stuff that they have in the trailer because 
that's another thing that they went all out with the details on, you know? Well, even as uh, Malcolm's sitting there talking to Sarah, there's, there's panels sort of mid-roof section with red lights glowing. You've got no idea what they are, what they do. you never never mm-hmm. going to see what they do. Um, exactly. But the fact that they put them there still brings a bit of realism and life to the set itself. Mm. And, man, Kelly made a mess. <laughs> We we, yeah, we talked does. we talked in an early minute how she didn't utilize the kitchen. Um, upon upon uh, editing the podcast and rewatching the minute, she did in fact come out of the front trailer when she's revealed. So she was in the kitchen cooking, but she's uh, she, she was in there cooking, and now she's got all this stuff in the back of the trailer as well. Like she spread <laughs> spread rubbish out from front to back. I can only imagine what her room looks like. Yeah. Yeah, Lane says when he comes in the trial, this looks like your room. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I had a pretty messy room as a kid, but, oh, my God, I'm just imagining her room with just junk everywhere. Mm. You know? And especially from her from her implications, she sounds like she kind of does a lot of stuff on her own because her dad's never around. So I can just imagine pizza boxes piled up next to a garbage can, stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, you can imagine the phone calls. Daddy, are you going to be home tonight? No. The pizza pizza numbers or the pizza place has its number on the fridge or something. Yep. <laughs> Just, yeah. Palm off the responsibility of the pizza shop so he doesn't have to worry about it. Uh-huh. As the minute closes out, we get... Uh, Ian stands up beside her and because uh, Sarah's starting to get defensive. Um, what bothers you is I'm not afraid of this place. And sort of that'll go into... Um, Minute 33, but we get Kelly also going back and finishing up the cleaning up job from the rear of the trailer. It's also interesting, the sign of times too, just looking at the interior of the trailer. Um, mm-hmm. The spotlights in there, like globed, large globe spotlights, where now everything will be LEDs. Um, oh, yeah. Um, you sort of got lamps lamps on uh, lamps on extendable arms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I suppose I suppose one of the biggest, biggest signs of... Uh, the times is the it's like the CRT monitors, not just having flat sc- <laughs> flat screens. <laughs> yeah, really. What's on the back of the computer? Uh, the rest of the computer. Well, you're What's joking. What's this thing on the back of the computer here? <laughs> <laughs> I can see the keypad, but I can't see the see the screen. It looks like a big TV or something. Dare I say it? There's even generation like my my son's generation now growing up wouldn't even know what sort of those sort of TVs are. It's yeah, all really. it's all flat screen. Mhm. Well, your son is about the same age as my nephew, and I was showing him. I I had to show him what a VHS was. He didn't know what a VHS was. Ah, uh, now mine mine does. I've got a um, I've got a little VHS collection here that I still have. They're more. It's more of uh, having to rewind. <laughs> he he puts, tried to rewind. Yeah, puts a puts a VHS in and. Uh, and credits and go trying to how do I go back to the home screen? No, you just got to stop, rewind, and play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's sort of fun just to relive some of that old old goofy stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing. I got I got some camera older cameras here, sort of film cameras. There's no film in that the kids love to play with. Um, yeah, the same. Yeah. All right. Well, Dave, anything else you want to bring up about minute thirty two before we get out of here? No, not really. It's not really that exciting for a minute, truth be told. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll get out of here and we'll catch you all next time. All right, sounds good. All right, guys, let's get the hell out of here. Contact details are on the website, thelostworldminute.com. You can email feedback to thelostworldminute at gmail.com, Facebook, The Lost World Minute, Twitter, at The Lost World Minute, and Instagram, The Lost World Minute. Easy to remember. Yeah, yeah, very easy to remember. Right. <laughs> uh, David, thank you for joining me. For this recording, and uh, we'll be back. I've been Brad. I'm Dave, and uh, we'll talk to you all later. Talk to you later. Bye. It is absolutely imperative that we work with the Costa Rican Department of Biological Preserves to establish a set of rules for the preservation and isolation of that island. These creatures require our absence to survive, not our help. And if we could 
Only step aside and trust in nature. Life will find a way. <laughs>